Hello and welcome to the Google Sheets tutorial on how to make a scatter plot chart. My name is John Flat and I will be covering this tutorial. Today we're going to look at scatter plot charts and how they can be useful for your company to show data. In this scenario, we are going to be looking at building sites for sale based on square footage and the price for the, the overall price for the property. In order to make any chart in Google Sheets, the first step is always to highlight the data and to create a chart. So the first thing you want to do is highlight all of the data here. We have 40 different data points to put into a scatter plot. So you go ahead and highlight them and you can either click on the insert chart over here or you can come over here and do the drop down and insert chart. Now Google Sheets always attempts to identify initially what the, the chart type should be. And in this situation, it found that it should be a scatter plot and that is correct. Now, if you wanted to change the different types, you could always do this drop down and select a different type of chart. But again, we're looking for scatter plot, and that's what Google Sheets detected. So it's going to be correct with what we're looking for. So to start, we have the scatter plot chart here already, and we're trying to now figure out how to make it more useful visually. Obviously, you can see the different groups um, already put together and identifying uh, maybe target areas based on cost and size that we would want to be looking into. But there's other variations that you can make to this chart to make it a bit more useful. To do this, you want to, in your chart editor, you want to select Customize. You want to go into Series. From the series, you can add a trend line. These trend lines are quite useful when you're looking at a scatter plot because it gives you an idea how things trend. And you can see that trend line is now added. It's quite simple there. You can change the color of it if you like, or any of the, the settings throughout here can be changed. Another really valuable thing within the scatter plot is what we call error bars. And these error bars allow you to see kind of the range of margins and see what's what's close to the you know the average price point, um, good price point, or what's way outside of it. So you'll notice right away when you do these error bars that you have a bunch up here on the right, the very high price with the large error bars, saying you know, kind of identifying that those ones may not be your target since they're they're quite a bit more expensive. Um, and then you see some of these other ones that are really well priced, and their error bars are quite a bit smaller. This will help you avoid purchasing a high overpriced area. Um, and allow you to target the, the range that you're looking for. <clears throat> With these scatter plots, we're trying to find clusters. These clusters help us identify areas to focus our search on. So there, there are notable clusters within this data set. Um, the first notable cluster we discussed a second ago, it's not a huge cluster, but it's a group of, of plots that are quite outside of the, the good margin that you're looking for. So that's one cluster. Now we'll see a couple of other clusters mixed in here that you can identify as potential areas of focus. Um, you can identify quickly that there's not um, a lot of extra cost between the 2,000 and the 3,000 square footage range, depending on area, obviously. Um, and that helps you quickly identify what you're looking for and without having to sort through the data to find it know the best priced area. And just to give you an example, if you were trying to do this, say with like a line chart or column chart, it's just, it doesn't give you that ability to identify what's a, where the good price is. Obviously, you'll see the standout ones that stand out as not a good situation, um, too expensive, but it doesn't identify as well as a scatter plot. A line chart would be quite the same. And here it shows that it's it's all over the place. It doesn't do you any good. So again, the scatter plot is really going to be your best bet. And I'd always encourage with a scatter plot to use trend lines and error bars because it really gives a bit extra layer of information that can be very beneficial to you. So that's how you make a scatter plot in Google Sheets. Thank you for joining us.